Spirit fill this room. Shekinah glory, sweet perfume. We need your presence, Lord. Oh, we need you. into our lives, right into this moment. Yes. So the invitation has been extended. And as the host, we are saying that, Holy Spirit, I am available. Holy Spirit, I am making myself present for you to be present, expressing in, through, as, and for me. I'm knowing that there is only one divine expression, one infinite intelligence. And whether we call it God, Allah, Yahweh, Jehovah, Eloheinu, Great Spirit, 
there is only that one, that divine creative energy which is the source and cause of all things in existence. We experience this as the sun that brings light and life to the planet, the moon in, in the night sky, the stars, the galaxy, the space between the stars, the earth, the plants, the trees, the fields, the fruit of the earth, the rivers, the streams, the rain, the air that we breathe that breathes us. And it is life. It is that fragile, tender, robust, vigorous, evolving expression of life that we are. I am a unique expression of this divinity, and I know by my birthright, I am whole, perfect, complete, divinely blessed as I am. This is the truth of my being. I'm speaking it and proclaiming it, and I claim it as the truth for each and every person on the planet. Each and every person on the planet. Each of us is this unique divine creative energy, divinely blessed, gifted, and we are urged to be more than we are in the moment. And so I speak my word that this day is blessed. From the moment we had awareness, consciousness, quote, woke up, we were being blessed with life, being blessed with wholeness, being blessed with wellness, being blessed with the healing energy of the divine, being blessed with the abundance and prosperity of spirit pouring forth through all our lives. And so I speak my word that this is a blessed day, this day, all the blessing, all the givingness of the divine is pouring forth through creation available to us if we but just say yes to being present. Yes to knowing the truth about ourselves. Yes to opening our hearts and our being. Mother, Father, God, I know you're pouring me out a blessing. I don't know how big it is, but whatever it is, I'm ready to receive it right here, right now. This is a blessed day. It's a good God day. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I know that here today we come in community celebrating the truth of who we are. Unique divine expressions of God. I know that right here today there are those who have come to be healed by the very presence in being part of our community. And there are those who have come to be the healers in our community. So I'm going to speak in my word that this service is blessed. That the words of inspiration we receive from our spiritual leader, Reverend Celeste Frazier, that the practitioners and assistant ministers who hold the high watch just hold us knowing truth is being revealed. That each of us is receiving that blessing, that knowledge, what we need to do in our lives. Mother, Father, God, I am grateful and give thanks just to be a voice of inspiration to remind myself and each of us there is only that one that is the source and cause of all things in existence and it is being present in our lives and affording us opportunity to be more than we are in each moment to moment and it's happening right now. So I give thanks for the message and the song and the music. I give thanks for the blessings that is just in fellowship and community. I give thanks for the leadership of the Board of Trustees who take their time and energy to guide this church through the business of being present here in this city, having the face and the place where we can have this place available for all people, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of gender expression, Regardless of economic circumstances, this is the welcoming place for all people to be, to lift their voices and know the truth about themselves. So I give thanks. I give thanks for each person who made the decision to be physically present today with us. And for those who, through technology, live stream, are present with us for this ceremony. I give thanks for this. I give thanks for each person saying, I am willing 
to open my heart, my mind, to be more than I have been. To avail myself to the gifts of spirit. Knowing that, yes, I am more than enough. And so in this attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving, I'm releasing this, my word, to the activity of the law. I'm letting it go, giving it back to God, knowing that it is already an expression. It's already happening. Even as my voice recedes, it is being brought into manifestation and being. And I ask you to anchor this with me for all time by saying, Ashe. Ashe. Amen. And so it is. Of your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Your Thank you. Thank you, Paris. Thank you, Vanessa. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good God day. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm a little excited. It's a rich day. We are alive. The blessings of God are around us. My name is Kuwaza Imara, and I am your pulpit assistant for this morning's service. At this time, I invite you to stand. We are going to read our Declaration of Principles. It's titled, What We Believe. There may be a copy on the chair that you're under the chair you're sitting in, or on the chair that's in front of you that looks like this. Nicely laminated. So we're going to read this, and we're going to read it with a little feeling. We're going to read it with a little passion. What we believe, what we believe. So together, please join me. We believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but it is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. We believe in the individualization of the spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit. We believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. We believe that heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. We believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete emancipation all power of every nature and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. We believe in the unity of all life and that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature and that anyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, 
operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. We believe in the healing of the sick through the power of this mind. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. We believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of life to all. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life of all is God, and so it is. Good morning, East Bay. Good morning. I'm Reverend Celeste Frazier, spiritual leader of East Bay Church of Religious Science. It is my joy to welcome you here this morning. I want to highlight the part of the Declaration of Principles that says, we believe in the individualization of the spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit. And so we welcome you here, God each one of you as an expression of God. Say to your neighbor, good morning, God. Good morning, God. So whatever path that brought you here from whatever faith, whatever background, whatever race, whatever political affiliation, whatever gender or non-gender, whatever sexuality, we welcome you here. In fact, we say happy Pride Month to all of you. At this time, I'd like to ask for those of you who, for whom it is your first time being at East Bay, please stand that we may confer a blessing upon you. If this is your first time at East Bay, please stand so we may give you some love. Okay. All internal family, please reach out, give a smile, give a hug, give a handshake and say to yourselves, good morning, God. Ah, yes. Good morning, good morning. 
There's some energy here. <laughs> I'm glad to see that we are all engaged and greeting with each other. I will let you know we have another opportunity to fellowship after service. This is our fourth Sunday. Our Spanish ministry will again have some of those wonderful tamales. If you didn't get them last week, last opportunity today. We also will be having a meeting after the service. However, that will be covered more in our community opportunities. Which, by the way, will be led, discussed by Brother Marlin. Brother Marlin. Community opportunities. Many of you have heard these community opportunities before. Probably most of you. I reiterate with the intent of inspiring you to govern yourself accordingly. An additional. And repetition is good for that. First time visitors. We're all family here today, but in case you, you didn't stand up, uh, a free CD is available in our bookstore, so do, do uh, come there and uh, pick that up. And I'm obligated to say thank you for your presence with us today. If you love kids, love playing with kids, teaching, having fun, and assuring a vibrant future for East Bay via our youth, the Youth and Family Ministry seeks a lead team member. You are needed to be aboard as soon as possible. So please talk with um, Reverend Celeste after service to secure your youth leadership position to sustain our progressive direction in that regard. Town Hall today after service and following our monthly potluck feasting, we will have a town meeting to discuss church business affairs and our collective vision for East Bay. Do stay and share your ideas, your concerns and outlook for our future here at East Bay is important. This building, this sanctuary is not the church. You, 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 all oh, y'all you are the church. Screening. Uh, Friday, July 28th from 6 p.m. to 9. Uh, July, June 28th. I'm sorry, I'm into my birthday month. Uh, <laughs> June. <laughs> oh, it's coming on fast, boy, these days. Uh, Friday, June 28th. From 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., East Bay will be screening a provocative new film, Tent City, that captures Cicero Jacob as a loving husband, father, and uncle who falls into deep depression and mental collapse after his wife dies of cancer. Highlighting the impact of unprocessed grief on mental health and the toll gentrification has taken on the uh, city of Oakland. In addition, this film is said to ignite a call to action to change the narrative of homelessness, mental trauma, and despair in reclaiming one's uh, humanity amid an ever-changing world. The filmmakers and cast will be present, including writer, director, 
forgive me, Ademu, Wolf Hawk, Jaggard, Matthew, and lead actor, Sizeway Abaka. Most certainly, this film is worthy of our attendance and attention. Absolutely. Treasure Trove. Saturday, June 29th, 9 to 3 p.m. is the day, time, and date of the East Bay Sacred Service Ministries popular Treasure Trove event, where you can get to sell, buy, generally used, or new clothing, plants, houseware, books, and numerous treasures in our parking lot. Donations can be bought here as late as 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the day of the event, but don't, don't, wait, don't wait till the last minute to start doing it. After the event, nothing will stay uh, at East Bay. All existing items will be disposed of the following day. We'll donate it to local charities. This is a fundraiser, so come enjoy the fun. One person's excess stuff can be another person's long sought after treasure. Uh, for one who attends estate sales all the time, uh, that rings a bell with me. Our uh, advanced care directive, uh, there's a presentation on that and after which we'll have a presentation by Bathsheba on our upcoming 46 gala. Good morning, East Bay. One of the other little roles that I have here at East Bay is also co coordinator for our health and wellness ministry. Next Sunday at 12.30, from 12.30 to 2 p.m., we will be having a workshop on advanced care directives. Some of us have those, some of us do not. But if you are taking care of someone or you are being cared for by someone and you want to make sure that your wishes are followed for your medical care, should you become unable to do so yourself, it's imperative that you have advanced care directives. Also, during the workshop, which we'll be talking about advanced care directives, we will be having the forms available. We will also be having a notary public available who will, free of charge, be able to witness these so you can have the legal document and you can walk out of here with that in your hand and have that available for yourself, for your family, for your medical practitioner. We will also have post forms, P-O-L-S-T forms, which are the forms that they use when if, if you ever you need uh, emergency services, these are the forms that indicate what your medical situation is and how you should be treated prior to hospitalization. We will have these available during the workshop as well, and there'll be refreshments. This is next Sunday, 12.30 to 2, right here in the sanctuary. Thank you. Good morning, East Bay. Good morning. So I am here to make announcements about our gala that's taking place. So how many of you were here before, I don't have all my trivia questions, so um, when Dr. Ernie folks was here, or one of the ministers, who was here before Reverend E? Anybody was here before Reverend E? Okay, became the minister. We have a few folks. How many of you were here um, during Reverend E's time? You came during that ministry time. Okay. And how many of you started with Reverend Celeste? You came during that time. Nice. So we have hands in the room. How many of you have received a blessing since you've been attending East Bay Church of Religious Science? Nice. How many of you seen prosperity growth in your life? How many of you seen like family dynamics change and you like, wow, my family life is better? How many of you seen experience greater love? Like love is just juicy, it's all around you, right? <laughs> right? See? Juicy love. So if you raise your hand for anything, that is truly a reason to come to the gala. Right? And the reason that I'm saying that is that this is a party with a purpose. 
Our 46 years is about the transformation in our lives, the awakening, the way spirit have blessed us. This gala is about your journey. And so we're inviting you on August 10th to come and party with a purpose. If you, your family members, your children, your grandchildren, your loved one have received some type of blessing, this is all the reason to buy a ticket and to be at the gala. And that we absolutely party together. Pat Baxter and her team, where's Pat? Stand up, Pat. Is doing an amazing, amazing, come on, give it up, give it up. Yes. An amazing, amazing, amazing. <clears throat> so we want this to be a journey back down memory lane, right? How many of you know that song, Back Down Memory Lane? Right. I see his photographs, right? They got something in there kind of like. So remember, this party is with the purpose. So if you have a donation item that you would like to donate, please see Pat for our auction. If you want to just sponsor a table or sponsor a ticket, we need your support. So with the 46 years, this should be a sold out event, not a seat available. So we're going back down memory lane. Think of every old song you've ever jammed to. I'm not just talking about regular music, church music too. And get ready to party. All right? All right, thank you. Thank you for your attention. That concludes the announcements. And now, our congregational song, Let's Stand Up! Say, wait, there's more. We will now hear from the 
fabulous East Bay Church of Religious Science Choir.
class. Good job.
inside of me. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. The higher you build your barriers, the taller I'll become. Way down is my source. Way down is my power. The faster you take, the further you take my rights away, the faster I will run. You gonna try to take my rights away? Let me, let me get to God sooner. Let me get down sooner. The more you refuse to hear my voice, the louder I will sing. Because I'm singing from the living waters. Yes, yes. Who surrender my wealth and my life will shine so brightly. It will blind you. You can't put out the light. Say to your neighbor, you can't put out the light. <laughs> Say to your neighbor, I know I can make it. I know I can make it. Amen. <laughs> As God is saying, however do you want me? However do you need me? Right? Right? And, and we are of like nature to spirit. The supreme spirit. We've got that. And so when we talk about in God's name, we're talking about in God's nature. We're talking about getting down into who we are. Right? And so we're, we're, we're having the capacity to know bliss because we live in a state of perpetual bliss. Because yes, we live in God. 
And if any of you are not having the experience of bliss, know that that is unnatural because bliss is our nature. Ernest Holmes says, naturally our first thought is that we would like to experience health of body, peace of mind, prosperity in our affairs, to neutralize a circumstance that is unhappy or to attract to ourselves some good which we have not been enjoying. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say that's pretty much what we're looking to have and to see in our lives? And so he further says, every one of us has within himself, herself, itself, the power to consciously cooperate with the spiritual side of our existence in such a way that it will create for us a new body and a new environment and a greater happiness. So we've got it within us when we cooperate with the Spirit, right? That's not pushing back against God. That's not, you know, ignoring God. That's cooperating with the Spirit. That's how we have a new environment. I already know. When, I, when I'm running up against some barriers, right, I have to turn within. I have to say, wait a minute. What am I running into but myself, which is not willing to listen to the presence of God, who is not in cooperation with the presence of God? I better surrender so that I am in the flow of my good. This is how I get into my bliss. This is how I get into a new environment. Because the new environment that I create in my oneness with God is better than that experience that I was having before. And so, greater than our five senses, you know, these things that we have for this dimension of earth, you know, sight, touch, hearing, taste, those things, there's three greater senses that we have. Ernest Holmes tells us it's a sense of certainty, right? We say it. We're free to be free from all discord, and that's surely to be attained by all. That means we certainly know that we don't have to stay in discord. We don't have to stay in discord because harmony is our nature. Harmony is who we are. So discord is when we are out of our nature, when we are out of our true selves, when we haven't gone way down. And so the second sense is a sense of the reality of our soul, right? We say in the Declaration of Principles that we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, our own destiny. For we understand that the life of God, of life of all, is God. And so knowing this, that, that we can't begin to say, well, you know, that person's life is not the life of God. You know, because we're walking and talking with our mind stayed on spirit, Right? So we're not going to begin to say, you know what, I am not in good spirits. There is never a moment when you are not in good spirits because the spirit within you ain't going nowhere. It's right where you are. And the third sense is that we have the continuity of our own individualized being and the relationship of this self to the great whole. So our oneness... Did y'all notice the, the numbers 4 and 6 equals 10? That's how we get to the oneness, and we're celebrating the oneness on our 46th anniversary, our key principle. So we're, we're looking to say, you know what? There is something individual about my God, my God self, that nobody else has. So I'm necessary to this thing called life, right? You are God. Say to your neighbor, I am me. I am Say, don't try to be like me. <laughs> and say, 
God needs you to be you. Right? It, you know, we're talking about an omniscience, so that's an all-knowingness. God knows what it needs to express and who to express through. That would be you. That would be me, right? So we don't have to, to, to compete with trying to do something the way somebody else is doing. That's not our style. Our nature is shared, but our styles are very unique. Our geniuses are very special to us. Something that we have is not in the same packaging or mindset of anyone else or any other being that is. So I was thinking about how that song was referencing the walls of Jericho. Y'all know that story, right? You know, the, the, the folks that had, had got up out of Egypt, they, were, they had got to Canaan, and they were, they, were, they were looking to go to this promised land, and here's these walls. These walls are up. They, 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 and when they excavated, they said it was like 11 feet high and 14 feet wide. And so there was this, horrible feeling of helplessness like how are we going to be in our promised land when these walls are here oh I know y'all had one of those moments when you wanted to get somewhere and there was something that looked like it was standing in your way I know you've had those moments when it looked like somebody was standing in your way I know you've had those moments when your own thoughts were standing in your own way And so they, 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 they thought that they didn't know how they were going to get through these walls. You know, these cities that had these walls, sometimes they were taken by assault. Sometimes they just kept the people behind the walls and they starved to death. Sometimes they would try to weaken the walls with fire. Where they would try to tunnel to go underneath the walls. And then the, sometimes they would even try to heap up some hurt earth to build a ramp so that the ramp would go up to the height of the wall. And all of these ways were not what was heard by their leader. Something, and we all know what something is, something said walk around silently this wall for six days. Didn't it say run your mouth? It said silently. So be still and know, right? And so walk around this wall silently for six days. Walk around for six days silently. Now you know what happens when you get silent. When you get silent, you're able to hear the voice of God within you. When you get silent, you're able to get clear. When you get silent, you're able to get inspired. When you get silent, you're able to catch a miracle. When you get silent, you're able to feel the presence of God. And on the seventh day, he said, shout! Oh, you know, folks, it ain't been talking for six days. Got a whole bunch built up. So when they shouted, it was powerful enough to shatter the wall. Now, we don't have to worry about people trying to keep us from our promised land, Trump. We don't have to worry about people trying to keep our brothers and sisters from our promised land. We don't have to worry about people who are experiencing no home. In terms of the people who are refugees or the people who are on the streets, worry is not our job. 
Faith is our job. By faith, you are whole. And so there is a by faith, but that's also following God's direction. That's also following God's guidance. Trusting in God silently. Trusting in God silently. That doesn't mean that you just talk about God. That doesn't mean that you just sing about God, although we can sing very beautifully about God. That means you're listening to the presence of God. So God is our life. God is our thoughts. God is our heartbeat. God is our breath. We allow ourselves to know that God is our everything. And when we have everything and we are steeped down deep in that everything, then when we shout, it's not simply shouting to be the loudest, but it is shouting from the power that is within us. And that's not necessarily meaning that it's at the top of our voice, but it does mean that it is filled with all the power that is within us. All children, let's shout together. Ah! Yeah. Wow, what a relief. Right? And so, and so now that we've shouted, we already know that something has shifted. If, if for no one else, it has shifted for us, right? Because by us doing this in a place where we've been asked to do it, not places where we're not expected to shout and people are looking at us like, what's wrong with you? But, but, but when those moments come, when you've just been holding it in for so long that there's so much that needs to be expressed that you haven't been able to express, sometimes when we shout, we end up shouting at people and it, it may be offensive to people and they may feel somehow violated or, or that they've been in a violent interaction. But, but when you're shouting from a place of this is the power of God within me, then that is truly enough to move whatever the perceived obstacle is out of our way. Or perhaps the unperceived obstacle out of our way. Of course, in miracles says, nothing can be apart from God and live. We're not apart from God. We can never be apart from God. Because right where you are, God is. And so there's a, there's a, sometimes I've had this, usually when I'm about to do some sort of career change or when I'm about to do some major shift in my life, I start feeling like something is dying inside of me. Something is, is, is not connected and it, 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 it's not because I I haven't been praying. It's not because I haven't been really um, recognizing the presence of God, but it's because there's an uneasiness, there's a restlessness, there's a way that nothing seems to be right until there's a shift that needs to happen. And, and, And when I stop to say, what is it? When I stop to say, what is mine to do? When I stop to say, what is it that I need to know? When I stop to say, what is it that I need to be? When I stop to say, what is it for me to do? And then everything around me starts to shift like the walls of Jericho. Because there's something that's been shouting inside of me trying to get my attention. There's something that's been beckoning me to stop just doing the things the way that I've been doing them. There's something that happens inside of me that is already transforming and seeking to emerge through me and as me and I am suppressing it because this is not something I'm familiar with and for some strange reason I'm thinking that I have to keep doing the things that I'm familiar with because this is the way it is and this is the way it always has been. But that's not enough for an expansive universe 
That's not enough for a multidimensional presence. That's not enough for the creator of all that is. That's not enough for an energy that never dies. That's not enough for creativity itself. That's not enough for the I am of my being. I am is my identification, right? And so we're knowing that even as Moses heard that at the burning bush, that I am, that I am, that I am, that was, that was a conversation that we could have had with each other. I am that I am, right? I am that presence. I am that power. And so I really want you to pay attention to what you say after the words I am. Because the power of God that is within us way down will say yes to that. Please don't say I'm broke. Please don't say I'm tired. There's nothing that's broke about you. You're a whole, you are perfect, you are complete. And truly that means that there's nothing missing from you. Truly that means that there's nothing that is missing. Please know that there is nothing that is imperfect about you. God is forever perfecting us from the inside out, right? So if you say, I'm not perfect, not perfect, that doesn't compute, that doesn't compute. What is that, right? And so it's just simply this staleness that just stays in your mind that doesn't produce anything, it just blocks things from coming into your awareness that would be your own shadow that's in the way of your light right but your light is still shining so there is a light the course says in you which cannot die say to your neighbor there's a light within you which cannot die it says the present, that presence is so holy that the world is sanctified by you. Repeat after me. That presence is so holy, that, is so holy that, the that the world is sanctified because of you. Breathe that in. Okay? That light within you is so holy that the world is sanctified because of you. Now, 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 now try to walk out these doors and forget that you know that. You won't have the same experience that you will when you walk out on to Telegraph Avenue, get in your car and say, the world is sanctified because of me. How am I going to show up? The world is sanctified because of me. What am I going to say next? The world is sanctified because of me. What am I going to do next? Right? There's a light. There's a power. There's a presence within me. And it's up to me to shine it. It's up to me to reveal it. I don't know why anybody would want to trip by hiding their light under a bushel. I don't get it. I don't get it because it's not my nature. Right? It's not your nature. So shine. Right? Shine. We bring the light. Let's say it together. We bring the light. We bring the light. Let's say we carry the light. We, we carry, carry the light. light. Yes. You know, they say that the power of God is supernatural. That means we're both super and natural. Right? Because we have this power. Can you see yourself being super? And I'm not talking about a cartoon. Can you see yourself being super? Like more than you have been, right? Like in the land of I am, kind of more than you will be. Like all that I am, kind of kind of living. Because all that I am, kind of living, is your real nature. And so we're being asked to be all that we are, not just a little bit of what we are, not what daddy said I should be in terms of who I am, not what mama said I should be in terms of who I am, but all that I am is not limited because the nature of me is not limited. 
And so this thing called you, this thing called you is our relationship between grace, really our theme, anchored in love, unlimited by grace. That's God's favor. It's God's support. That's God's love. We don't have to do anything for it. We don't have to trade anything. We don't have to lose ourselves for it. We're simply knowing that this relationship with grace, with faith, and with obedience is the way that we are able to overcome any seeming walls that come up in our minds or anywhere in our lives. This faith is the trust in God. You can ask anybody in the 4T prosperity class, they'll tell you there's about 30 of them. They'll tell you that there's something about faith that makes a difference in my prosperity. There's something about faith that will absolutely shift my circumstances. And there's something about obedience. There's something about obedience saying yes to that I am, being that Receiver, that receptive being. Say, I am receptive. I am receptive. Now, of course we are. But don't we have to be careful about what we're receiving? Don't we want to know the difference between when we're receiving something that makes us whole and something that is getting in the way of our light? Right? So when we make our decisions, we can ask where is God in this, right? Do I see God in this? Is my light flickering or is my light going up Klieg like like full out, right? Am I feeling fulfilled or am I just simply feeling full? Because feeling full generally means you had too much of something that you didn't necessarily need. But being fulfilled is being filled with the I amness and absolutely willing to embrace it. Ernest Holmes says, I believe in a direct communication between the spirit and the individual. The universal spirit personifying itself through each and all. This is a beautiful, a logical, and an unavoidable conclusion. Wow, I can hear Edward R. Murrow saying, and that's the way it is. Right? Direct communication between spirit and individual, universal spirit personifying itself as you, as me, and this is a logical and unavoidable condition. So anything other than this thought is simply not the truth. So I'm a personification of spirit. You are a personification of spirit. And the only reason that we might be miserable and unhappy is that we're ignorant of our true nature. Breathe that in. The only reason that we're miserable and unhappy is because we're ignorant of our true nature. So there's... No way, Ernest Holmes says, of distributing an undistributed power without first providing a definite channel through which it may flow. How do we know what, that God is? It's flowing through something, right? You can see it at the beach when the waves come in and they go back out. This is the nature of the divine flow, right? You can see it in the sun rising and setting. You can see it in the moon rising and fading out. There's a channel through which God is revealing itself. You are that channel. I am that channel. We are that channel, live streamers. Right? There is a direction that God is leading us in. And if we can simply stay awake and aware and believe in this truth, that we won't get confused. Therefore, we won't get into discord. 
Therefore, we have to be centered on this concept of harmony and that we are in a dance with the divine, right? We are, we are in a dance. There's a time when God is giving to us and we're receiving, and there's a time when we move forward in our I amness. And so this cha-cha-cha, right, is, is a rhythm, and it's the rhythm of the universe. It's the rhythm of your soul. It doesn't require discord. Just be that dance partner that you want to have, right? Dance with the spirit, and not, that doesn't mean that you get to sit one out. Because what it means is that in order for us to silently walk around whatever is in our way, we must know that the power is within us. This thing called you is so very necessary to this thing called life. It is God expressing uniquely as you. I'm so grateful that you're here. Namaste. I invite the ministers and practitioners to stand with me as we we move into prayer. Thank you for the prayer box, Bathsheba. Mm -mm, in the black bag. Thank you. So I recognize this presence, this power. Thank you. This love, this joy, this peace, this freedom. I recognize this truth deep down. I recognize the I amness. I recognize the wholeness. It's the allness of life. I am one such expression of it. Each of us are an expression of it, including those who are live streaming us today. Everyone who is seeing this, whether live or in recording, this is the I amness that we are each an aspect of. And so what is true for God is true for each and every one of us. So I'm knowing that this wholeness is right there where each and every one who is on our prayer list is. We're knowing peace for Carol Johnson as she cares for her beloved mother, Miss Melrose S. Johnson, we're knowing that whatever it is that her body is seeking to do is in divine right order. And that Carol is there as love, not as fear, but as love to uh, support Miss Johnson in being all that she needs to be in this moment. And so we know whatever that condition is, that Melrose is whole, perfect, and complete. We're knowing this is the truth about her spirit. I accept and expect that her spirit informs her mind, her emotional body, her physical body, and all of her subtle bodies of this truth. I'm knowing that right where Annette Lane is, our beloved usher, that wholeness is, perfection is, completeness is. We're knowing that she hasn't been feeling quite herself for a while now. So we're surrounding her now with this love field, this love energy that we're sending to Annette right here, right now, saying, Annette, we know who you are and we absolutely stand in agreement with the perfection of your spirit revealing itself through every dimension of you on this plane. So we're knowing the same truth for Quinette Ozen's mother, Nellie, perfect health. We're knowing that that peace that, that passes understanding that was with her when we heard that she was going to the emergency room, that peace is still there. It's there for Quinette, it's there for the entire family as they hold this high watch for Nellie. Knowing that Nellie is complete just as she is, 
We're knowing that the spirit of Nellie is, has been, and forever will be complete. And that regardless of whatever condition she is moving through, that this remains the truth of her throughout eternity. We're knowing that peace for Jennifer Ware, whose brother Mark has shuffled off the mortal coil. He has no further use for this physical body, but his spirit continues to soar. His soul continues to be revealing itself to the utmost. And as he acclimates himself into this new dimension, we continue to send him love, knowing ease in that release. And that any, any seeming tendrils that try to hold on to him are dissolved so that he may be on his flight, on his journey, forever expanding good. Um, knowing perfect health for Miss M, our beloved member of many years, that whatever that seeming condition is that has seemed to catch her off guard or that seems to have her be of any concern, we know peace. Be still. I am God in the midst of you. I know that I am. This is in the midst of her. It is that which is revealing to her what she needs to know. Whatever that shadow is that is seeking to perhaps dim her light, there is a fanning of that light. There is an absolute I amness of her being that is being amplified, dismissing and destroying anything that appears to be shadowy. I'm knowing that there is a great, grand, and glorious way that God is revealing itself to each and every person who has placed something in our prayer box. I'm knowing that any sense of lack or limitation is now dispelled, that there are no earthly solutions to a heavenly idea, and the heavenly idea is each and every one of us. I'm knowing that wherever there appears to be a void, that it is filled because the vacuum of life itself will never stay longer than a millisecond. This universe that abhors a vacuum will absolutely place itself in any seeming gap and, and fills it and fulfills it. So I'm knowing for any gap in the mind, any gap in the, in the emotional body, that God is filling it right now for any issues with relationships, that God is that bridge right now. It is that love, that light, that, that shows the way and then makes the way. And that shows the way and it makes the way between us, between each other, and between everyone who we encounter in our lives and anyone who we encounter in our minds. For each relationship is occurring in our minds. And so I'm knowing that the outpicturing is that harmony, which is our true nature, which is our true I amness. And so I'm knowing for anyone who is having any kind of dis-ease in any way, including the sometimes weaky Ayanna Johnson as she continues to release her sister and to know that Georgia is in perfect and right order, right where she is. And so I'm knowing that any kind of dis-ease in mind is, is absolutely freed up to leave now, back into the nothingness. It's, it's free to go. It has no place in our I amness, in our God identity. And so I'm knowing that everything is working together for our good and the good of all concerned. I give thanks for this knowing. I give thanks for this truth. I give thanks for the fulfillment of this word. And in great gratitude, I release this word to law. Law being perfect, it is already done. And so it is. Amen. Hold ushers for a moment. We're going to do something here. We want to acknowledge during this Pride Month that there is each one of us who fit into a category or an identification of some kind when it comes to the sexuality. The L being lesbian, we celebrate you 
who identify as lesbian. We celebrate you who identify as gay. We celebrate you who identify yourself as a bisexual. We celebrate you who have identified yourself as transsexual or transgendered. We celebrate you now. If you fit into any of these categories, we ask that you stand now so that we may send you our love and give us and give you our light. If you're comfortable doing so, you may do so, or you can do it from your seat. If you identify yourself as queer, we celebrate you now. Stand if that feels real to you and right to you. We know there is nothing that is queer in this magnificent omnipresence. For anything that is different. We know that this is the true of all of creation. For intersex, if that is an identity, we celebrate you. We celebrate you if you consider yourself asexual. And we celebrate A as also ally. If you are an ally, please stand with us. We absolutely know that there's only one presence. And that God in its magnificence, whether it's way down deep or right there in our crown chakra, we recognize the allness of this family. This family of man, this family of woman, this family of they, he, she, or assemble. However you recognize yourself, however you now think of yourself, again, live streamers, stand in the glory of your magnificence and absolutely shine your light now. We let this candle be an indication of that inner light, knowing that it is never, ever put out. The light continues to shine throughout eternity. And so we give thanks for it all. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for all who stood. Continue to stand, even when you're sitting. As we prepare for offertory now, we do so with an awareness of God's givingness. We do so with an awareness of the infinite flow of God. We do so with an awareness that we can't be God giving, that there is a source that never leaves, that we never leave our source, that there is a bountiful, beautiful, prospering energy within us, and so we affirm it through our giving. Whether we do it by texting, streaming to 50155, whether we do it by going to the kiosk and swiping our credit card, whether we do it by going to ebcrs.org and going to Gracious Giving, whether we do it through a pledge, whether we do it during the 4T Prosperity class on Tuesdays, this flow is in motion. And so the I Amness says yes to all that we are giving. It's not for God, but it is for God's divine ideas. East Bay Church of Religious Science is one such divine idea. We accept all the good that East Bay gives us and we express our gratitude for all that East Bay gives us through our giving at this time of offertory. 
in great gratitude, I release this word to law. Law being perfect, I let it be. And so it is. I am. Offering. We bless this opportunity to give from the money substance back to the substance of our being, knowing that we are ever connected by its support, its supply. It is our substance. In gratitude for it all, I release this word and I let it be. And so it is. Amen. May we see our children. Are they ready for us? We're ready for them. Let's ask them when they come out, what you been doing? Teach us something. Tell me something I need to remember. Tell me what you know. I'm reminding each of you to please stick around for our potluck and for our town hall. We want to hear from you. We want to know what's on your mind. We want to know what's on your mind. Tell me something good. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Today we talked about self acceptance, self love. And we did a little practice for Youth Sunday, which is next Sunday. I hope everyone is there. Yeah. Encourage the kids. And we have Hannah. She's going to read the affirmation for today. <laughs> I consciously take my place in the creator of my own world. I am a guardian of my own fate. I cooperate with spirits in letting the idea of wholeness flow through me in the joyful expanse. Thank you, Hannah. So I wanted to have a volunteer to just say what they feel they do to exude self-love, to express that for themselves, to acknowledge it. Yeah, um, yeah I'm Jaden. Hi. Um, what I feel... Um, in me... Uh, 
I love myself、um, because God's in me and and、um, and yeah. Good job, Good job Jaden. Show self love by not putting myself down.、Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so、um, we're really excited. It's summer. We're all doing summer activities. We're trying to get an activity together for July, and we just want to encourage the kids. Please show up for Youth Sunday. They're really excited. They're going to sing, and they will be part of the service doing. The service that you see the practitioners do, all of the children will be participating. So let's stretch our hands out, show the kids we love them. You ready? All right, we love you. We see you. We know who you are, and we accept you unconditionally. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, ch- children. I hear、uh, Hannah's going to give a treatment next week. I hear Amanda's going to do the welcome. Ah, now I find out things. What did you find out about you today? Did you remember who you are as the light of the world? Well, let's stand together and give thanks for that knowing. You're touching God. Grace is showing up because you said yes to extend the love from within. Ah, we let the love wash over us now. Not only at our fingertips, but right there in the depths of our soul, our very hearts. The I amness of our being. It's the harmonious. Activity of all of life. We celebrate it. We give thanks for the children, for the music, for the volunteers, for all who have served this day. We are so very grateful that we are reassured. We have a blessed assurance that we are God incarnate, and that's not arrogance. That's simply truth. We accept it. As we sanctify the world in gratitude, I release this word, and together we say, "And so it is." Amen. Yes, Stella. I'm knowing you're good. Yeah, I'm all good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.